Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be chapter 16, Economic Voting. Uh, it starts off talking about three functions of economic voting. Uh, you have the reaction function, which is uh, the government creating policies that affect the economy. You have outcome functions, which are the policy effects on the larger macroeconomic and microeconomic um, outcomes. Um, these include things like uh, employment and growth and poverty, uh, inflation, investment, etc. And then you have what's called the popularity vote function, um, which is basically a, uh, an encompassing category for the effects that policies and their outcomes have on voting behavior and voting patterns. Uh, so we're basically just going to talk about uh, the reward punishment model, sort of the um, the Downsian rational choice model of economic voting. Um, it has three basic assumptions built into it to make it work. Um, that voters... Um, act rationally in determining economic uh, outcomes and that they sort of reward or punish political parties based on that information, right? It's kind of a high bar given what we know about political information uh, in Western democracies, but that's the first assumption. Uh, the second assumption assumes that voters vote retrospectively rather than prospectively. They take a an overall picture of a party's um, of a party's policies and their outcomes on the economy in the past. Right. So in the U.S., it'd be like you know how has Biden. Um, and his economic policies um, affected our economy over the last three years, right? So we're looking backward. Uh, and then finally, um, the last assumption is that voters actually uh, use this information to punish or reward political parties um, uh, for, their, for their behavior and their policies. Uh, so there are some major problems, right, with this. Um, according to just basic rational choice theory, voters should conceptualize economics prospectively rather than retrospectively, right? They should conceptualize how are political parties going to affect me and the economy um, in the future, um, so that's sort of one of the basic tenets of rational choice theories um, in, in other political and other um, sort of scientific realms is that, is that the actor um, is looking forward rather than backward. Um, some other attribution problems. Uh, the first is that um, theoretically the rational choice model suggests that um, that voters should reward and or punish based upon um, economic performance, right? But statistically, we find that the reward side is disconnected and that the vast majority of voters punish rather than reward and think of economics um, at least tangentially with their vote um, in a punishment sort of way rather than a rewarding way, right? right? And, and, and that's a problem for the sort of model that's been, that's been handed down. Um, another problem is that, you know, we're in the United States where we have a president and that makes things pretty clear as to which party um, is responsible for economic behavior and policy outcomes. Uh, but if you look at most of the world, most of the world runs a proportional representation system and they have to build a coalition government the vast majority of the time. Um, one party does not have 50 percent 
of the seats in these PR systems. And so you have to build sort of a multi-party coalition. And this creates um, sort of a disconnect um, and real informational costs when it comes to whether and how voters are able to hold parties responsible um, for their economic policies. Um, if you have, say, you know, three to five parties all in a governing coalition, who the hell do you blame for that, right? Um, maybe you just turn it against the entire coalition and don't vote for any of their parties, but um, it's really hard to attribute uh, responsibility for some of these policies in PR systems. Um, also, from an informational perspective, it's it's really hard for individual voters, right, to to have a vast knowledge of contemporary day to day economic outcomes. Um, and how they're influenced by policies and political parties um, on a grand sort of aggregate scale. It's a lot easier to sort of tell how your pocketbook is, right? This sort of pocketbook voting idea and, you know, how your individual or your family are doing. Um, but when you start looking at overall economic indicators, um, you know, some are good, some are bad. There's dozens to hundreds of them to look at. Uh, it becomes quite, uh, it stretches the imagination a bit to think that, that most voters have that sort of information at their fingertips um, or are that deeply caring of sort of the aggregate sociotropic tendencies in, you know, our massive economies. So um, that's another sort of strike against the rational choice theory, right? Information is a cost and it costs a lot to learn that much about macroeconomic theory and policies. So um, we're going to call it there for this chapter. That was chapter 16, the final chapter in unit three. Um, so I will see you soon. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, have a great time with your families and please be careful out on the roads, um, on your way to see your families on your way home. Uh, I'll see you soon. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bye.